Hi everyone, this is CP Prashant from KV Ganeshkin Pune again. We will continue with solid state. In the last session, I had explained a few aspects of solid state. I had explained about close packing of solid state. I had explained by drawing the circles on the board. Now I will try to teach you the same concept using these figures. Take a proper look at the way the particles are arranged here. This is the first layer of arrangement. When you arrange the particles like this, hope you are able to make out two voids created in the first layer. One set of voids are marked as yellow. The second set of voids are marked red. So this uh, set of voids created here, the yellow voids and right voids, uh, red voids. Now when you keep the spheres on the second layer, if you can make out these blue spheres are in the second layer and those blue spheres are kept on the voids created by the first layer which are marked yellow. So the blue voids are on the yellow, blue spheres are on the yellow voids. So from here we have created a second layer. From here also we have, we have created a second layer. The second layer, the blue spheres are used. The red spheres are still visible in the second layer, if you can make out. The yellow spheres are not visible because those yellow spheres are now being covered by the blue spheres. Now when you go to the next layer, the third layer, again in the second layer, sec after the second layer is done, a white void is visible and a red void is visible. The red void are the voids which are from the first layer. White voids are from the second layer. Those white voids are between these blue spheres. Now when you keep the next layer, the third layer, the spheres in the third layer here are white in color. Those spheres are utilizing the voids created by the second layer which are marked white. The red spheres are still visible. Whereas in the next figure, the third layer which are made by the yellow spheres those yellow spheres are being kept at the voids which are marked with red. So you can see the white voids here, the red, void, red voids are being covered. Now if you look at the way the crystal is being created, the layer on the first layer is, the spheres on the first layer is shown here, second layer with the blue. Here also spheres in the first layer, second layers with the blue. Now when you come to the third layer, the third layer is made by white spheres. You can see the white spheres are directly above the first layer. Whereas in the next figure, the spheres on the third layer which are yellow in color, which is coming neither above the first layer nor above the second layer, it is making a separate layer. So. When you arrange the spheres like this, two possible arrangements are there. One, first layer, third layer come together and you call it AB, AB arrangement. We call this B because second layer is not aligning on the first layer. Now the other arrangement as I said, first layer and third layer are not coming in one line. So we call it A, second layer of course is different. Third layer is altogether a different layer. Now if you go with the next layers, it will follow this pattern. If this is the arrangement, we have already studied that it is called hexagonal close packing in three dimension. And if this is the arrangement, we call it cubic close packing in three dimension. The same uh, concept is being once again here. You can take a proper look. This is the first layer. Here the symbol cube is shown. Here body centered cube is shown, which you have studied in the last class. You can see the spheres at the corners and one at the center. Here there are spheres at the corners, at the center there is no sphere. Coming to the two kinds of arrangements, 
this is the arrangement where there is one layer with orange spears, second layer with green spears. Now, when you develop it in the third uh, layer, it can be done in two different ways, either this way or this way. Now, look at it. The in this arrangement, you can see the white voids which are shown here are being covered, whereas in this arrangement, you can see white voids are visible, the other voids are covered. Now, what it means is this is a hexagonal close packing where you have ABAB arrangement as it is shown in this figure, first layer, second layer and third layer, whereas this is giving you uh, CCB arrangement, ABAB, ABC, ABC arrangement. So, thus we come to the end of the discussion of HCP and CCP arrangements. In the last class, we had also discussed about the number of particles which are available per unit cell. The same concept now is being shown with these figures. It will be easy for you to understand. Look at this figure. This is how we have drawn it. When it is shown as close packing, this is how it will look like. Now, the way each particle is being shared is being shown here, which means the one particle is being shared by eight unit cells. The number of particles available is only one by eight, whereas in this case you can see there is one sphere at the center of the unit cell. Now, the sharing is shown here and you can see how in BCC the total number of effective particles come out to be two. From the corners you get one, from the center which is not being shared, it is exclusively for that particular unit cell, so total number becomes two. Whereas in uh, FCC, you can see the way the each particle is getting shared here, only half is available from each phase to the unit cell. There are six phases, total six into half makes three, one from the corners, it is one, one plus three makes four. So, effective number of particles in simple cube is 1, BCC is 2 and in FCC it is 4. Now, we will uh, talk about the primitive unit cell which we had discussed in the last class. You know in primitive unit cell, the particles are only at the corners. In centered unit cell, particles may be at the corners as well as at the center of faces, center of edges or center of end phases. Now, the primitive unit cell need not always be cubic in nature. It happens to be cubic when this distance, um, sorry, this distance, this distance, this distance, let us denote them as A, B, C, each of them are equal. This angle is 90, this angle is 90, this angle is 90. Let us denote them as alpha, beta, gamma, each angle 90. This leads to the cubic unit cell which is shown here. Apart from cubic primitive unit cell, there are six more possibilities depending on the value of A, B, C and alpha, beta, gamma. All seven together we call seven crystal systems or seven primitive unit cells. The primitive unit cells are shown here, cubic which we had already discussed. In triagonal you can see the relationship between A, B, C, alpha, beta, gamma. Orthorhombic, look at the relationship. Monoclinic, see how alpha, beta, gamma, A, B, C are related to each other. Hexagonal, rhombohedral and triclinic. So, there are seven crystal systems. They are different in terms of the length of A, B and C, alpha, beta and gamma. Now, these seven crystal systems as we have discussed in the last class, the primitive unit cell where the particles are only at the corners can become a BCC if there is a particle at the center. It can also become an FCC if the particles are at the faces. You can see those three possibilities in cubic unit cell. Such possibilities are there with every unit cell. So, triagonal can have 
such possibilities. Orthorhombic can have such possibilities. All those possibilities together, if you take, there will be 14 possibilities. Three from cubic cell, other possibilities from other crystal systems, all together make 14 possibilities, and we call those 14 possibilities Bravais lattice. Thus, we come to the end of this particular discussion. Now, let us move on to the next concept. How exactly in a unit cell, the radius of a sphere is related to edge length of the unit cell. By edge length, we mean the length of unit cell. If this is how you represent a unit cell, This distance represents edge length, which is represented by A. The sphere has got the radius R. We are trying to find out how this edge length A is related to the radius of the sphere, which is R. How is that relationship different in symbol cube, body centered cube, and face centered cube? Now, you can see in simple cube, it is very easy to understand. The edge length, if you take R, I'm sorry, A, the radius is R. Your two spheres together make one edge of the unit cell. Therefore, R plus R makes A, 2R makes A, R is equal to A by 2. This is how radius is related to edge length in simple cube. Now, look at uh, the BCC and see how A and uh, R are related. Consider the diagonal of the unit cell. If you consider diagonal of the unit cell, you will see there are two spheres at the corners. The total radius by two spheres will make it R plus R, 2R. At the center, there is a sphere. The total radius will be 2R, R plus R. So, total distance of this diagonal will be 4R. 2R from the corners, 2R from the center, total makes it 4R. Suppose you consider that diagonal as B. So, the body diagonal let us consider that as C. Phase diagonal, which is shown here, which is B. You can see this phase diagonal is hypotenuse of this particular triangle. And in this triangle, B square can be written as A square plus A square, where A represents the edge length. So, this is 2 A square. So, B square is equal to 2 A square or B is equal to root 2 A. So, remember the phase diagonal is equal to root 2 a, where a is edge length. Now, let us consider the body diagonal, which is represented with the c here. You can see c square is equal to the phase diagonal, which is b square plus the edge length, which is a square. b, we already know, is root 2 a. So, b square will be 2 a square plus a square. Therefore, this is 3 a square. Now, look at C. The C is the body diagonal. It is made up of one uh, sphere at the center, which will make a 2 r's, 1 r at the corner, 1 r at the corner. So, C can be considered as 4 r. Therefore, A is equal to 16 r square this is equal to 3 a square. Therefore, r is equal to root 3 by 4 a. 16 will come here. So, square root of 16 becomes 4, square root of 3 becomes root 3, a becomes, a square becomes a. So, this is how r and a are related in BCC. Let us do the same uh, derivation for FCC also. In FCC, you can see the 
let us consider this triangle the face diagonal which is considered as b b square is equal to a square plus a square we are considering this particular triangle now this will be 2 a square b is 4 r because it is 1 r 2 r is at the center and 1 r at the corner so total makes 4 r so it will be 4 r square which means 16 r square is equal to 2 a square r is equal to square root of 2 divided by 16 a this will be 1 by 2 root 2 a so r is equal to 1 by 2 root 2 a see all the relationships once again in simple cube you can see a is equal to 2 r in bcc you can see r is equal to root 3 by 4 a and in fcc you can see r is equal to a by 2 root 2 this relationship is very important you can get numericals based on these relationships moreover these relationships are required to find out the packing efficiency of these crystals let us take a look at this uh, crystals you can see here it is shown packing efficiency of simple cube is 52 percentage packing efficiency in body centered is shown it is 68 percentage and packing efficiency in FCC which can be either HCP or CCP it comes to be 74 percentage. So, it is 52 in simple cube 68 in BCC 74 in FCC we have to understand why packing efficiency by packing efficiency what you mean is how efficiently the crystals are packed in simple cube you can see the voids which are remaining are much more higher than the voids remaining in BCC FCC it is the least therefore the packing efficiency is supposed to be maximum in FCC lesser in BCC and least in simple cube let us see how these values are arrived at and for understanding these values or working out of these values these relationships are required how R and A are related in each of these cubic systems let us now see the packing efficiency of the crystals now let us uh, speak about the packing fraction or packing efficiency see when the spheres are arranged in any crystal there will there are always some voids created so to find out find out packing efficiency what you do is 